great. I'm, I'm very excited for this. Um, there's, we have Greg here who is super smart and I'll introduce uh, a little bit later on. Um, but first, I'm going to get going with uh, our, our slideshow here so we can get you guys uh, started. So there goes, that's me and the YouTube. Um, can, you, uh, can you guys see my screen? Everything's good? Good? Good to go? Okay, perfect. Awesome. Okay, great. So guys, welcome to the webinar. Um, this is all about uh, a demo of our machine learning based stock price forecaster, right? Um, it's it's going to be a really cool one. Um, I'm very excited about this one personally. Um, this is our agenda. We're basically going to be talking about kind of some details about the course first. And we already have a chat. Welcome, everyone. Yeah, perfect. Thanks, Greg. Um, so yeah, so this is basically our agenda. Um, first, I'm going to take you guys through kind of some details about um, Lumi Wealth and our courses and what this course is all about. Um, and then I'm going to introduce Greg and he's going to take over from there, right? So um, we have another chat already here. Thanks. Yeah, perfect. Awesome. We got some conversation going already, guys. Perfect. If you guys have any questions throughout uh, this entire webinar, make sure that you post them into our chat or use our Q&A feature, and we'll be able to answer the questions throughout uh, this actual webinar. Okay. So first of all, um, I want to introduce uh, to you myself. Um, I'm going to skip over this. So I'm going to make this one last so we can have a nice little seamless transition, All right, If that's okay with you, Greg, I'm I'm sure it is. I'm just going to move this to the very end here um, because I think it's, it makes a more natural transition. Okay, so who am I? So my name is Robert. Um, I am the CEO of Lumi Wealth. We created this company uh, about two years ago and, and it's going strong. And thank you very much for, uh, I know there's a couple of our students already in here. So thank you very much for you guys and your support. Um, what we do uh, as a company is we essentially uh, we help people create algorithms, right? And we help people learn how to code uh, in the finance world. So we have some Q&A stuff coming up here. I'm so gonna, anything good? Thank you for having us. Happy to finally be around. It was a Q&A. Is there anything? Will this slide show be available to download afterwards? Yes, th this will be available to download afterwards. Um, we will send out the slides as well as um, this will be on YouTube. So if you're not following us on YouTube, Lumi Wealth, is one word is basically the same name as our, as our company. Search us on YouTube, make sure you subscribe as well. Um, and that way you'll get future videos like this. Um, but yeah, this video is gonna be uh, recorded uh, on YouTube. So you'll be able to rewatch it. And we'll also add in the links to all these slides. So you'll be able to get all this stuff as well, all right? Okay, so yeah, so again, my name is uh, Robert. Um, I'm the CEO of this company. Um, I also teach the, the algorithmic trading course uh, in, in this uh, business as well. So if you guys are not familiar, um, that's another course I teach too um, within this company. Uh, Lumi Wealth, what we are is we are a company that's really focused on coding for the finance world, right? So we help people build out financial algorithms to trade stocks automatically, right? That's our algorithmic trading course. And we're, what we're introducing now is, and I'm very happy to introduce, uh, is our machine learning course by someone very, very smart, which I'll introduce to you very soon, uh, Greg Tanaka really does an amazing job doing this kind of stuff is machine learning in, in the finance world. And I think you guys will be blown away. Um, so this is our algorithmic trading course. We actually should switch this out for a machine learning course, but it's okay. Um, I will take you guys to our website here, lumiwealth.com. And this is how you can basically find these courses. So go to our main website, lumiwealth.com, get started today, or you could just scroll down a little bit and you'll see our courses and services, right? Um, as I said, I also teach the algorithmic trading course. So um, you guys can check that out as well. And this is our brand new course that we are just introducing today is our machine learning course. Uh, and you can click here to check it out, right? It's right in the smack in the middle. It's perfect. Um, this is some information about the course. Um, essentially, we have three different plans. We have our videos only plan where you get to watch after the fact, after uh, the, the course is done, you'll get access to the videos uh, to basically see the recordings. Uh, we have our live class, which is by far our most popular, where you'll actually be able to be in a class like this, like very similar to this, except you can interact and ask questions and every week and you really get in, in depth into things uh, without me talking about all the little details of our company. Um, but you really get to go in depth into things uh, in this live class and people love it. It's amazing. You get to know other people. Um, check out our testimonials page and you kind of like get a, get a feel for um, how much value that adds. Uh, we also have a project help and tutoring plan. Uh, which is if you need one-on-one -on -one help, we could actually help you out with things or even develop some stuff for you if you need. Um, these are the, this is the pricing for these classes. 
video is only is 350. This price is going up soon, by the way. So if you want to get at this price, make sure you buy now because uh, this will go up very shortly. Um, live classes are 2,500 bucks approximately, paid over three months. Uh, we have a payment plan, so we make it a little bit easier for you. Um, and then there's our project and tutoring uh, kind of thing. These live classes, as I said, are definitely our biggest seller, just because you get to be in a class with Greg. It's kind of like you're there in person. You can ask him questions. You guys can interact with each other. There's a lot of group type stuff where you, everyone can interact and get to know each other and maybe even build projects together. So if you want to work, uh, I know Greg, uh, you're going to be leading this class, but you know, uh, in, in the algo training, the same thing. We allow people to actually work together if that's what they choose to do. Um, so this is really, really great class to do. Um, and you also get, uh, I know these questions get asked before, so I'm just going to address them now. Uh, you get access to the videos afterwards, right? So you get recordings of all the classes afterwards. You get a lot of code, you get a lot of materials, you get a lot of stuff given to you. So um, these live classes are, are kind of the main thing. Uh, if you scroll down further on the page, we can tell you a little bit more about machine learning and the outcomes of the course, um, and then the curriculum, which is down here. Um, I can let Greg kind of take more into the curriculum if he'd like to, um, but really uh, it's broken down to three parts. It's eight weeks in total, right? So it's eight weeks live, one hour per week. Um, sometimes we go over, sometimes under, um, you know, it's the natural thing of a video, right? Um, but basically the first four weeks is like kind of fundamentals of machine learning and how it applies to finance. There are a lot of little details and Greg can tell you a lot more about this, about actually machine learning is one thing, machine learning for finance is a whole different thing, right? So there's a lot of like specific things you need to learn about that. So even if you guys do know machine learning, um, there are still a lot of things you can get from it. If you guys don't know machine learning, then we'll also teach you kind of the fundamentals there through this, right? Um, and then there's two projects, just like any of our other classes. There's one, the first project, which is basically building a forecasting model, which is what Greg's showing you today. And again, he's going to show you exactly how that works and how to run something like that. Um, and basically, it's just using machine learning to forecast stocks. Um, instead of using technical analysis, you could be much smarter than that um, and make a lot more money, I'm sure. Um, disclaimer included, right? This is, we're not financial advisors here. Um, and then um, Capstone Project, which is going to be using natural language processing to basically, so you know that these Reddit guys, this, this, this is actually really exciting. Um, imagine getting to know what's happening on Reddit using uh, machine learning. And you can actually read, so like, for example, as GameStop just pop like crazy. Um, imagine being able to get ahead of that, right? Like you, have, you build a machine learning model that's actually reading stuff like that and can get ahead of it and actually trade on that. That's specifically what you're going to learn how to build uh, throughout this course. We don't, that's not what we're presenting today. Um, we will probably present that in a few weeks from now, but um, definitely a very, very cool thing to do. And that's what you'll learn coming out of this course. Um, the game stops of the world and trying to get into those types of things. Um, and this is our class schedule. Uh, starts on March 30th. Registration closes on the 23rd. Um, it's eight weeks long. Um, we recommend about 10 hours per week in effort, right? Um, and then it's 8 p.m. Eastern time on every Tuesday or 5 p.m. Pacific, right? Um, and I know Greg is on the West Coast, so for him it's 5 p.m. And anyone else who is out there uh, in California on the West Coast. Um, and again, one hour per week live over Zoom. So it's a live class, right? Okay. And these are a little bit more about our projects. You guys can read. I'm not going to go too much into it. Um, and here's some information about Greg, which he'll be able to explain to you and I'll explain to you a little bit as well. Okay. So that's just going over the course there. Um, thank you, Greg, for updating that. Perfect. Um, we have our Discord channel. So something that I have to bring up to you guys is our Discord channel is amazing. Um, I can't tell, I can't stress enough how much our students love this. It's super active. Check this out. It's like nonstop people talking all day. It's, it's great, honestly. So if you guys haven't joined our Discord yet, this is the link. Please join it. It's amazing. You'll really get to know a lot of people and it's a community that's growing and you get to meet people that are actually running these types of algorithms and have gone through courses like this. So you, you can ask past students how they've done. You can ask a lot of things. It's, it's really something, uh, something great. Yeah. Cool. Um, another thing I got to bring up before I pass it on to Greg um, is we have a survey at the end of the webinar. Please make sure you fill out the survey at the end of the webinar so we can keep making these things better and better for you. Um, you know, we believe in feedback a lot. So let's tell us what we can do to help you. Right. Uh, there's a couple of questions in there. How, we can, how can we make the webinars better? There's also a couple of questions about, you know, um, what kind of courses you'd want to have. Right. So or what types of things you want to learn from the courses. So please make sure you fill that out. OK, so without further ado, um, I'm going to introduce Greg um, and I'm going to give it away to him after this. But uh, so to give uh, and he'll give you more color on this. 
But Greg, basically, um, we found him. He is a superstar, essentially, in the world of machine learning and in finance. Uh, he has he's started a company, um, I believe, co-founders of a company uh, called Pika Group, where they specifically focus on building machine learning models for people like you, right? For people that uh, want to build out um, trading robots and machine learning models to make money in the stock market. Um, and I believe also corporate clients as well. Um, so, uh, Greg is also, uh, he's at Stanford right now. Uh, nice little school if you guys have heard of it. It's only number one in the world, right? Um, also graduated from Caltech and what was the other one? UC Berkeley or I think this other one. Um, you know, nice little school. It's not just the top like three in the world. No problem, right? <laughs> um, but without, without further ado, I'll give it on to Greg. I'll let you fill in kind of the color that I'm missing there, um, but I'll pass it on to you and let you take over, right? Great. Thank you, Robert. I really appreciate the introduction. Um, so um, yeah, just, just to talk a little bit more about myself. So native Californian, uh, as Robert mentioned, I'm, I'm literally two blocks from Stanford right now. Um, and uh, uh, I've been in machine learning for the past eight years. Uh, uh, the other company that I started is Percolata. Um, so it's very heavily focused on computer vision as well as forecasting, uh, like forecasting sales for retailers. And then we saw a lot of demand uh, for forecasting in, um, in uh, uh, I, just really, I need to share my screen. So let me, let me do that here. Uh, otherwise you, you guys aren't gonna see what I'm talking about. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, so, okay, good. You guys can all see my screen, right? Okay. Um, so uh, let me open up that little chat box so I can see the questions too. Um, actually, how do I see the, oh, here it is. I see the chat box. Okay, yeah. So, and I, I definitely like to keep this interactive. So as you guys have questions for me, just type it in. And if I can't, Rob can, can help jump in as well. But um, so I've been running a venture funding company for, for, for a while now. Um, and, um, you know, machine learning has, has been truly transformational in terms of what this enabled, um, especially for, in the area of finance. So, you guys could check my LinkedIn. I, I'm actually very searchable on the web, so you can see, see a lot about me. Um, but um, super excited to be here and super excited to uh, getting a chance to talk to everyone here. So let's, let's kind of dive into it. Um, if you think about trading, right, what is the essence of trading, the core of trading? It really is about forecasting, right? I mean, you have all these different indicators, all these you know, candlesticks, RSI, you know, you name it, Bollinger Bands. There's a whole bunch of different things that people do. But what it all comes down to, all this complexity comes down to is what you're trying to do is you're trying to predict what will happen, right? That's obviously what you're trying to do when you're, when you're, uh, when you're trading. So the, the core of all this is a forecast, some sort of forecast of what will happen. So, um, so on the right-hand side here, you see this graph. Um, the stars group, so TSG. And you, know, you see this, the typical candlestick charts. Um, a lot of traders use things like RSI and there's, I don't know, hundreds, maybe even, maybe not thousands, but at least, at least hundreds of, of indicators that people use, um, like technical indicators that people use. And um, they use it as a way to figure out like, okay, is this stock gonna continue to go up? Is it gonna go down? Is, is it gonna stay level, right? These are all kind of forecasting signals that people use. And the reason why uh, people did this back then um, or it was heavily used is because a lot of times you didn't have a computer, right? And so you needed you need, you need these relatively simple technical indicators to, to be able to do this, right? And the result is, and you can see kind of what, here's RSI plotted out on the bottom here, is that it's, it's kind of noisy. You can kind of see if you squint, you can kind of see, yeah, you know, it, it's just, RSI is kind of saying, yeah, it, it's, going to, it's going to keep trending upward. But... I mean, there's a lot of noise in this. I mean, I think most people look at this and think, there's, there's a lot of noise in it, right? Is it really, you know, is it really that predictive? If you saw this and you saw the graph on top, would you really say that RSI was truly predictive? Kind of, right? Kind of, right? But, but you know, there's also kind of like false signals. Maybe you would have sold here, right? Instead of here, right? Because this is just a little bit, a little bit lower. Um, and so, um, so there's these kind of like, what, what I call like old school type of technical indic indicators that people use. And I think in the early days, when I say early days, like, you know, maybe like 50 years ago, 
um, just using technical indicators, you could probably do okay, right? Because a lot of people were just kind of eyeballing it. Um, so technical indicators definitely gave you an edge. But these days, um, and maybe that's my next slide. These days, um, I mean, I don't know if, if folks on the, on the Zoom here know, but almost all of the trading these days is actually, um, actually algorithmic, right? So you get, I'm sure a lot, a lot of guys out there read Seeking Alpha or these other kind of blogs out there, but a lot of it is algorithmic trading. And um, all of these indicators and, and, more, and, and more are being recalculated every microsecond, essentially, all the time. Like there's all these bots out there, like kind of what Robert's talking, all these algo training bots out there and largely institutional bots. And what they've done is they pretty much whittled away any, um, any like obvious profitable strategy. I mean, it's really hard to find. You could, you could find them, don't get me wrong, you could find them, but they're really hard to find now because, uh, because any, you know, any obvious technical, uh, technical strategy based type of, trading has like someone's coded up and it's running right now as we speak and it's running it faster and doing it more often than any human could possibly do it so this is why it's been very challenging uh, because the easy profits have been have been uh uh have been kind of eliminated and i see a comment here technical indicators are mostly lagging indicators and it's true they're they're lagging indicators but they're they are a type of a forecast they're kind of like a what i would consider like a a primitive forecast. Let's put that. Way. It is a forecast, but they they are um, they are supposed to be predictive of the future. But they are they are. It's a good point, uh, Marlon. It is kind of a lagging indicator. Um, and the, and the big problem with in these kind of really simple indicators that you know, if you Google, um, and I'll show you a Python library that has most of them in there, um, is that they're they're really simple, right? Um, so the, the Simple is good and if you're doing it by hand, you're using a spreadsheet or something, that's, it's good to be simple. But it's not so good if you're trying to get an edge because um, pretty much everyone else is doing the same thing. So there's not a lot of profitable, um, profitable, uh, uh, there's not many $100 bills laying on the sidewalk, so to speak, right? A lot of that's been picked up. And um, the way to think about models, okay, so, so at the highest level, the way you think about what is forecasting, what are, what are, you, what are you trying to do when you forecast, is you're trying to extract um, signal. You're trying to extract um, predictive signals out of data you have and put it into a model, right? So there's, there's a couple parts of it. One part of it is extracting that predictive signal. The second part of it is having a model that has capacity to hold it. So with really simple indicators, if you look at them, they're like simple ratios, right? They're, or simple averages. They're very, very basic type of models. And those models, um, if, you, if you think about like, what are the number of parameters, right? So the complexity of a model can be measured on how many parameters it has. Um, and when I say parameters, I mean, everyone here has done like junior high school algebra, right? So like Y equals MX plus B, right? So the equation of a straight line, very simple. That's like one of the most basic models out there a straight line model, right? Um, that has two parameters. That has the slope plus the y-intercept. Very, very basic, easy model to understand. But it's not very, um, it's not very smart. It can't really, it doesn't have the capacity to hold um, a lot of that predictive signal. So, but, but that's, if you look at a lot of the, a lot of the technical analysis type of um, uh, indicators out there, a lot of the technical indicators, they're like y equals mx plus b. They're like a straight line. They're like really super duper basic. You know, like very few parameters. Um, they don't have the capacity to hold complex signals or complex complex patterns. So, um, so this is also why like a lot of the institutionals actually have started moving on to a lot more advanced models versus the traditional technical indicators you may have used. You know, or people may have used like 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago. So, um, so this is the problem with the traditional trading indicators. And this is probably why most of you are on this call today. Um, so, so what's the difference between the technical indicators plus machine learning? Technical indicators, easy to calculate, easy to understand, right? They're very intuitive, right? They're, they're great. But like, like I said earlier, two pop, pretty much everyone does it. And there's programs out there running all the time that pretty much Anything you could think of, someone's been, someone's doing, and it's currently being, currently running, right? Um, and I, I think the other thing that's really important, 
and I can't emphasize this enough, is capacity. So if you look at some of the most advanced machine learning models out there, right? So, um, so there's probably the biggest one out there is something called GPT-3, uh, which is this, it's from a company called OpenAI, uh, or an organization called OpenAI. And it's like in the billions of parameters, billions, right? They, I mean, they, they, I read stories that it costs north of 100, or not 100, but north of $10 million in just compute training costs <laughs> to train that model. So it's just, it's just, it's just mind blowing how, how, um, how complex these models are. And so you gotta imagine like there are models out there that are billion plus parameters and these technical indicators have like two or three. <laughs> it's like, it's like, it's like stone age, right? It's like, it's like, it's not, it's like um, you're going to war with a stone ax, right? I mean, versus like, versus like some, something there has like the atomic bomb and you're going there with a stone ax, right? And, and you're expecting to win. And it's like, there's like no way, like no way. There's no hope. I mean, it's just like, it's like almost impossible, right? Really, really hard to, to do better. So machine learning, okay, they're, they're really, um, okay, so the downside of machine learning is it's computationally complex, much harder to implement. But one thing that the way Robert and I structured this course is machine learning has advanced a lot. A lot of the really basic nitty gritty stuff where you have to be a PhD and, you know, PhD from Stanford to be able to do, a lot of that stuff, there's libraries out there, there's API services, so it makes it a lot easier. So, so uh, machine learning has, has become um, much more accessible and something that more the, the, the average human being could do, let's put it that way, versus in the past, even like 10 years ago when, we, when I first kind of started in the machine learning area. But the thing that's really important is that um, it, it allows you to have, like I said, there's two parts. So forecasting, you can break it down into two, there's two fundamental parts. There's extracting the information, and then there's being able to have a model that could capture it. And this is where machine learning, especially deep learning, has a huge advantage over traditional indicators. Right, traditional indicators, very few parameters, doesn't have the capacity to hold the predictive signal and doesn't really have the ability to extract the predictive signal. So, um, so it's, uh, it's, it's, it's pretty game changing in that respects um, in terms of being able to forecast a lot better. And um, if you think about now the knobs that people could turn, right? Because now you could have any data source, right? You could go to Wall Street Bets, the Reddit, the Reddit uh, sub, the subreddit on, on, on Reddit. Um, Wall Street bets, right? With the thing that kind of, like, I think, boosted GameStop, right? You could go there. You could you could look at the, the, there's there's like hundreds or thousands of, of subreddits. There's Twitter feeds. There's um, news feeds. There's like incredible number of different data sources out there that you could use um, to differentiate your strategy. Because if you're thinking you're going to go to battle with the same exact technical indicators as everyone else, and you're going to somehow have an edge and win, I mean. Good luck. Right? It's probably probably not going to happen, right? Um, but with machine learning, there's a whole wide swath of of greenfield opportunity that wasn't previously available. It's still hard, right? Because a lot of like a lot of the big institutions have started started uh, utilizing machine learning, so it's still hard. But the thing is, is that it's such a vast, like basically everything could become a predictive signal for your for your forecast. And so there's just unlimited, it's like an unlimited playing field. Um, so this is definitely much more cutting edge. And so you have a better chance of being able to make a profit here than or getting some sort of edge than, than with you know just traditional indicators, right? Traditional indicators is it's like you, you you could get lucky, but it's it's and, and a lot of those a lot of those strategies only are there for just temporarily. Like they're just there for a few weeks, a few months, and then you know, somebody else figured it out and it's it's all the profit is is taken away. So again, any questions, um, just you know, feel free to, uh, actually this one raised, I think someone has their hand raised. Uh, Robert, how do we handle that? Do we, uh, do, we, do, do we just have them yeah. type? Or do we, <laughs> hey, so can you hear me? Yeah. So yeah. Uh, she actually asked a question and you, I, I answered it in the chat, but you can also go ahead and answer it. Uh, if you go into Q and A oh, oh. Uh, under answered questions. Is, oh, uh, okay, okay, awesome. sorry. I, I didn't see that. Yeah. Um, okay, yes, okay. How do we verify the accuracy of the forecast model? That's later in the presentation, I'll, so I'll definitely address that. Yes, I, I didn't, um, I didn't uh, see that part of the Q&A. So now, I, now I'm, uh, I'm, let me move it down so I can actually see it now. Okay, good. Um, yeah, but yeah, keep the questions, the chat's going and I'll, I'll try to answer um, uh, as we go. Okay, so what is machine learning? Um, so 
what's really interesting about machine learning is it's actually more like how humans learn than how how people program computers today. So with conventional, virtually 99.99% of, of computers out there are programmed conventionally, right? That means you have some sort of data, you have some sort of program like Python or something, C, Java, whatever, and then it produces some sort of result, right? That's conventional programming. And virtually almost everything we use, electronic, is done through conventional programming. This is analogous to, on a human level, like a brain surgeon going to crack open someone's skull and rewiring it, right? That's, that's, that's what it's equivalent to. Now, it's very, so brain surgery is very uncommon for humans, but it's super common for computers, right? Computers, we're basically hardwiring it, right, the software to do whatever, right? Um, machine learning is more akin to the way we learn, right? So humans actually we learn not by someone opening up our head and saying, okay, this is how your neurons should be routed. It's actually, we learn by example. So as a kid, we're saying, this is how you hold your spoon or your fork or your chopsticks or whatever, right? And then we learn through kind of examples and keep doing it until we, we master it. Greg, so so, sorry to stop you. I just want to say there's a few questions here. Oh, okay. To answer, yeah. Oh, there were questions. Okay. Wait, where is the questions? Oh, open question. Oh, sorry. Yeah, <laughs> like under Q&A. <laughs> so there's, so there's open and there's answer. Okay. Um, is, algorithm, is algorithmic training part of machine learning? Um, it, okay, so um, so algorithmic trading is kind of like the the way to think about it is like uh, there's like a car, right? The algorithmic training is you got to have a car to drive, right? So so that's like the car. Algorithmic trading is like the person driving the car, right? So it's like there's there's it's the smarts behind the actual trading. So the way the way you can most think about there's like there's like indicators or like forecast, and then there's like triggers, right? The the triggers and the trading. I think that's Robert's other course you guys could take, which you want to be able to know how to use the Alpaca API and you want to be able to, uh, so, 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 so the machine learning part is, this, is, to, is to give you the smarts or give your, your algorithm training the smarts to actually make profitable trades. The algorithm training is, is the actual trading part doing the triggers, like saying, okay, if the forecast has a 90% confidence, this is going to happen, trade on it, right? Or sell on it or whatever it might be. And then the next question is, what kind of, um, what kind of um, entry positions would you apply, be applying for? What was it trying to be? Okay, so um, if you get really good at machine learning, okay, well, at the, maybe, maybe it's probably less so now, but like the top, I read in paper at one point, this is like a year or so ago, it's probably less now with COVID, but the top, if you got really, really, really good at machine learning, the top machine learning people could get like seven seven to eight hundred thousand dollars. It was actually in the paper. It was like this astounding salary. You're really really good at machine learning. Um, I think frankly, because machine learning has got it easier. Uh, there's a lot more APIs out there, a lot more libraries that's started to come down because it's becoming um, more prevalent and more people know how to do it. Um, but it's uh, it could be the salary could be quite high. It's still it's still kind of a uh, specialty skill. But I mean, it's like if you go to any computer science program, it has become like something that people must learn. It's become as like, as, as like programming 101 almost, like machine learning 101. Everyone has to take that before graduating. Um, and then do you think without machine learning and trading prior knowledge, I can make money through trading? Um, I think anyone can make money through trading. It's, it's about um, how much, right? So, I, I mean, I think everyone dreams of you know, writing like one line of code, Python code, and just making, you know, a gazillion dollars. And the truth is, is that's probably not going to happen. Um, I think what's more likely to happen is you can make a, it's, it's not too hard to make a small profit, um, uh, a small profit more frequently than making a big profit consistently. That's really hard. Making a big profit consistently is really hard. And, and the way you have to think about it is like, how many hundred dollar bills do you see on the ground? Not too many, right? You, you once in a while that, that happens, but the chance of that happening is pretty low, but it's pretty often to find pennies on the ground, right? Because people are like, oh, too much work to pick up a penny. But imagine you had a machine that can automatically pick up those pennies, right? This is the whole idea about algorithmic trading is there's a lot of pennies on the ground because it's not worth for a human to try to pick up those pennies, just too much work, right? But with algorithmic trading, you can pick up those pennies very cheaply without like seeing at your computer all day. And that's the whole driver. That's why um, there's been a big, um, the people, People are doing a bunch of trading on Robinhood, but they make some money, but it's not a lot of money, right? And but it's a lot of work, right? And so that's why a lot of people are like, well, heck, can I can I automate this? And that's the whole idea about algorithmic trading is that there's all these pennies on the ground, 
there's not too many hundred dollar bills on the ground because people pick those up all the time, but there's a lot of pennies on the ground. And so people want to use, they, people want to use algorithmic change to pick up these pennies so that, uh, you know, it's, it's otherwise, otherwise you're earning like minimal wage, pick up pennies, right? So that's why people want to do algorithmic trading. Um, but machine learning is important because it gives you that edge, right? So, it, so, so more of an edge you have, more, you, more higher chance you are to pick up hundred dollar bills versus pennies, right? If you're, if you're using the same thing as everyone else, it's like the, the, the scraps are left on the ground. Like, like the 80% of that algorithmic training is done by institutionals and they're pretty much sucking all the easy profits dry, right? Um, and so the only thing left are like the scraps essentially, right? So, um, and if you're trying to do it manually, good luck. It's like, it's hard to make, it's hard, unless you know something special, you, unless you have like some sort of like, some sort of edge over everyone else, it's really hard. Um, so machine learning gives you that gives you the chance to um, gives you that chance to be able to um, uh, make more um, more per trade than you could otherwise. Um, is there any prerequisite knowledge to be successful in machine learning course? You know, I th I think actually machine learning is is a great leveler because it's a very way, very different way of thinking of programming computer versus regular programming. So for myself personally, I, I started programming when I was six. I won my first programming contest when I was seven. So I, I've, I've been programming for a long time. I, I, I love programming. Um, and like, you know, um, so there's a lot of really great programmers out there, but machine learning is a very different paradigm as I, as I kind of point out here, right? It's, it's, you're not actually, you're not actually putting in Python code or Java code or, or, you know, Ruby code. You're, you're putting in, you're putting in the training data. So in some ways, um, it's, it's, a, it's a great leveler because this is a kind, of, you're not gonna find someone that knows machine learning for 50 years. Th th those people just don't exist, right? But you will find people who've been programming for 50 years and they're pretty damn good, right? Um, so, so this is kind of a newer area. And this has been enabled by the fact that we have like a lot of cheap GPUs out there so you could, you could train them. Um, so computers have gotten a lot better. The algorithms has gotten better. And frankly, it's gotten like, way easier, right? There's a bunch of packages out there now and APIs that, that make this thing way easier. So the real trick of machine learning is actually the data sources. The data is the fuel, uh, is the fuel for, um, for machine learning. So in some ways right now, the, the most uh, valuable people right now are like software engineers, but, but in the future, maybe the most valuable person is a teacher. So if you think about great teachers, right? Great teachers for kids, they are able to put, you know, examples in front of kids and get them to learn something quickly, right? And they could check for understanding. And so it's, it's, it's almost, I mean, this is a great simplification, but it's like, it's like you're, you're, you're teaching, you're like, you're like, you're like, when you're doing machine learning, it's almost like you're a teacher, right? You're, you're, you're trying to, you're trying to present examples to the, to this, to the, um, the model and you're trying to get it to pick up patterns. And so you're testing for like, just as a teacher gives a test, like pop quiz or a final, you're, you're giving tests as well to the model. It's like, did you learn the lesson I gave you, right? So in fact, this course is an is example of, of teaching, right? We're teaching something, right? And then I, I don't think like Robert has any tests, but we have projects that people do, which I think is far better because you learn much more through projects. But it's, it's, it's the same kind of style as, that's what machine learning is. It's, is actually in some ways way easier to do machine learning than programming in that it's like, um, it's more analogous to how people learn. It's like, this is what humans do. Humans do it through, nobody, nobody, nobody jacks in our, our head, you know, a program. We, 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 we learn it through example. So anyways, but good question. So yeah, keep, keep them coming. Um, so let me, let me move on here. Um, so let me, let me talk a little bit about uh, Pika. So if you go to the pika.group website, um, you know, um, these are the services that we provide. So what happened is there are a lot of day traders out there and they, um, they, uh, get tired of, you know, picking up pennies, essentially. They, they want to like pick up pennies faster, but they don't necessarily have strong programming skills, but they have, a, they have a successful strategy, but it's incredibly time consuming. So what we do is we, uh, we do basically consulting, right? So we, uh, we basically, uh, um, code up the training strategy. But that's only part of the part of the challenge. The other challenge is, well, you have to um, 
keep it running, right? So a lot of people try running algo trading on their own computer, which um, if you're watching it like a hawk, is maybe not so bad, but like if your internet goes out, your power goes out, it can be really challenging. So we host it on the cloud, we use Google Cloud because it has very, um, very good um, uh, machine learning APIs. Um, we also provide a little interface to it that you know you can use it on your phone. It's like a point of click uh, user interface. Um, and then we have like fail safe measures. So in case um, like the algo goes crazy, which you know it's easy to do, you don't want it to lose your portfolio, right? And then we have a lot of back testing facilities in there that help you kind of validate everything. And then um, and then um, uh, a, a library of machine learning models that you could use. Um, and so um, so these are people who are already been very successful day trading, and they just need someone to help code up, and they want to kind of enhance what they're doing. Um, and so here's some examples. I, and I, I, this is, you know, uh, this is something I have to just talk about, you know, so the most important thing is past performance does not reflect, reflect future results, right? So this is, the numbers here are, are purely like um, examples, right? They're not saying, they're not a promise of what you will get. But um, so I don't know if everyone out there knows what sharp ratios are, but sharp ratio is a reflection of how much return you get um, uh, divided by the volatility. Like, so like, so sharp ratio over three is typically very good. Sharp, over, sharp ratio over one is actually pretty good too, but three is, is like amazing. Under one, you want to think a little bit, a little bit harder about it. Um, but machine learning based investors are able to get typically better sharp ratios, which is, which is good. So less risk, better return. Um, and, um, you know, pretty good um, compound annual growth rate. Um, so um, it's something which, um, this is kind of like the motivation behind machine learning is that you're able to get the kind of edge that you can't get just using traditional methods, right? Because all those traditional methods, everyone knows about them already. And everyone's run, everyone's not, everyone, not, not does everyone know, everyone knows about it, but everyone's actually running right now. All, all, those, all those strategies are running as we speak every millisecond of the day by a lot of people. And that's why it's hard to make money in the markets because you're going against all these other bots, right? Okay, um, so, um, so let me talk about the tools that we'd be using. Um, so um, Apaka, Apaka is it's just a few miles north of me. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm in the South Bay, Apaka is in the, on, on the peninsula, uh, uh, San Mateo. Um, great service, they um, give free stock quotes. With the $1, you could, you could get access to their real-time quotes, the Polygon API, um, very easy to sign up. Um, so so we will be using this, uh, Python 3. So Python, um, Python is, probably the easiest programming language to learn. It's very, very forgiving, very, um, very, uh, uh, I mean, I, I think if you, anything you want to do in Python, if you Google it, you can probably find it. Someone who has an article on Stack Overflow. Um, so it's really great community behind it. Um, pandas, pandas is, um, is, is essentially like, like you think of it almost like a programmatic, programmatic um, way of using Excel, right? It's like it's Excel on steroids. It's kind of like, a, it's kind of like, a, but it's like, in, in Excel, it's a little bit hard to do like Visual Basic or uh, to do um, programming in, 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 in Excel, but Pandas makes it very, very easy. So it's very easy to use. Um, um, in, this, in the little demo I'll give you, we're gonna be using um, uh, TA. TA is a technical analysis Python library. So this has all the, the traditional old school um, uh, indicators in there. Uh, we'll be using libraries like scikit-learn um, and in the agenda, um, I don't know, Robert, if I should go over, you kind of went over the agenda, but I could go into more, more detail. I don't know if it's worth it or not, but I also want to kind of be mindful of the time, but um, yeah. It's, it's up to you. I'll let you do uh, whatever. Okay. Uh, it's, it's your course, Greg. Okay. Your course. Okay. <laughs> okay. So I'll, I'll just talk about this. Then we, we could, if you were interested, I could go, I could go a deeper dive on it, but I just realized we're at uh, 540 here. Um, and then uh, Google Colab. So, so the one thing that's really different about um, really different about machine learning versus regular programming is machine learning is all about experiments. Um, so if you think about what is, what is a good teacher, a good teacher doesn't just talk, 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 and then, you know, good luck. A good teacher actually checks for understanding. And so, um, so mach with machine learning, that's really important. So um, Google Colab is just a nice free version of something called Jupyter Notebooks. So Jupyter Notebooks is what they call interactive Python. 
And, and the reason why that's really important is because it allows you to interact with the model much easier than using like PyCharm or more traditional software engineering tools. Um, once you have things working, then you maybe move it over to, to PyCharm and more traditional type of software engineering type of thing. But, but for um, when, you're, when you're trying to do model development, um, using Jupyter Notebooks or Colab is the way to roll. I mean, it's, it's, it's really, really nice. And it makes programming, it, it's actually, I would suggest one of the easiest ways to learn programming is actually using something like Colab. It's very, very interactive. It's, it's um, you know, one cell at a time. And I'll show you guys what that looks like. And then um, Google Cloud Platform. Um, so um, these days, I, you know, I would not suggest writing any model from scratch. I mean, there's so many great APIs and, and libraries out there. Uh, Google Cloud, Cloud Platform happens to have a really good um, AI platform library. So we'll be using that. So let me talk a little bit about the demo here. Um, so I'll talk about a little bit about the setup. So how do you set things up for like a PACA? How do you, how do you get the training data? How do you get the test data? And again, you know, I'm gonna be talking about training and test. That's really important. So you think about what does a teacher do in a class? They give training, then they give pop quizzes. Did, did the students get it or not? How do I need to change my instruction to, to make it better, right? How do, I, how, how, do I, how do I give better examples? So the whole idea, you just think back yourself back in the classroom. There's all these, the training, the lectures, uh, these examples presented, and then there's the testing, right? That's, that, that training testing cycle is super important in machine learning. Um, to train the model, right? So this is where all the compute time goes is in the training of the model. And then um, uh, generating the predictions, right? So once you have the model trained, then generating the predictions, then an analyzing the results. And then what happens is you kind of, in, 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 in um, machine learning, it's kind of, uh, yeah, a full cycle, you gotta do it again, right? It's kind of just, this, this is like a very iterative process. So let me, let me jump to the Colab. Um, so Colab is great, it's free. Um, although Google um, has made it a lot more restrictive. They used to have like free GPUs and a bunch of other great stuff. Now it's become a lot more limited, but, um, but anyways, it's still a great place to get started. So let me, let me talk a little bit about um, how this is structured. So if, for those of you guys that are not familiar with, um, with uh, Jupyter Notebooks, Jupyter Notebooks is what they call interactive Python. Um, so basically you type a few lines of code and then you run it to see how, how it works. Um, and then you keep jumping between different cells and you, it's, it's interactive because you're going to different cells. And this is really important because you, you need to do a lot of testing, a lot of trial and error with, with models. So let me get into the setup here. So um, in this example here, um, you know, you got to install kind of like the, the basic, um, the basic uh, uh, Python libraries, like the technical analysis uh, library, the Paco trading API. Um, uh, you know, I, for this course, we're using Google Cloud. So we're going to be using Google Cloud Super Manager. One thing I, I got to emphasize a lot is never put your API keys in the code. It's just really bad news. It's, it's a security, it's like um, dangerous. So never put API keys in your, in your code. Um, unless, you, unless you really have to, but I, I just can't emphasize that enough because you don't want to, you don't want to have a hundred thousand dollars in your account to unhack your account. That's just disaster. So don't want, don't want, don't want that. Um, so we use pandas. Pandas, as, as I said, is kind of like the Excel, the programmatic Excel, right? That's the way to think about it. Um, these are just some, some helper, helper, like the date time and math, uh, libraries, JSON, um, uh, Another Apaka library. Actually, I have. Uh, yeah, this, these are just these are just instantiating, um, instantiating the uh, the uh, libraries above. Um, and then um, SK Learn is a is a very common, popular machine learning library out there. Um, and these are some of the models that we're pulling into our our um, our system. Um, so the way you authenticate with Google is you just do authenticate users, um, and then it, it it brings up a little. Um, dialog box for you to paste and code, paste and, and can paste the code in here. And then um, let me kind of go up. Uh, let's see. Um, and then, yeah, I, I'm always paranoid about this, especially with financials. So I, I use Secret Manager. And so for this course, what we're going to do is um, uh, Google offers like a free um, $300. So we, well, for the course, we're going to have everyone sign up for Google Cloud. You get a free $300. Just basically open a Gmail, new Gmail account. And you could get three hundred dollars for that account, and for the for this course, I'm going to try hard to make sure that we stay within three hundred dollars, so you guys don't have to pay extra. But one thing, one word, one, one word of warning is that um, oops, I have to reconnect. One word of warning is that um, 
Oh man, <laughs> this thing was set. Okay, I'm not sure we're gonna run this now just because it, we'll have to sit here and wait a long time now. But anyways, um, one thing is that, um, is uh, um, uh, um, you, you have to account for the machine time. And machine time, especially if you're using GPUs, can be, can, can, can be a little bit pricey. So that's something to think about. Um, anyways, you get you kind of say get it set up for uh, Apaka. It just pulls it from the secrets. Or if you're like living on the edge, just put your keys right here, and then um, and then yeah, then you uh, activate uh, Apaka's uh, training API. So that's a setup. And then um, in terms of um, so this is um, this is like the the key part, right? How you how you um, present the data to the model. And what data you present? That's really, really important. So the training part of, of machine learning is everything. Training is like where like eighty percent of the action happens, right? So the training training data that goes into models is what they call features, right? So I think we call, when I talk to about features, that's what I'm talking about. It's like the training data that's going in. So what features are we talking about? Um, so in this case here, you know, we put in our training stock. I'm just putting SRE. It's, it's a somewhat volatile stock. That's why I like using it. It's hard to predict, um, so it makes it kind of interesting. Um, here, what we're doing is we're just um, we're um, training it on. So bar set is just the way to get the stock information from Apaka. Um, so we're going to basically take um, take uh, we're going to train from like June first uh, to July first, right? As an example, and um, and then um, so you basically get that training data, right? And then um, and then what you see down here is basically all the um, uh, and there's a lot more. So if you go, if you look at the TA library, there's there's a ton of them. Pretty much any um, technical indicator you can think of, that library has it. So there's no need to memorize the formula. Uh, there's a bunch of them out there, right? So we have like popular ones like RSI, plus a bunch of other ones, right? Um, and then we feed these in as features, right? So now here's the difference between just using this these R these uh, features on your own versus putting them into a machine learning model. Um, so um, now. Um, I, I would not say you make a lot of money by just doing this example. This is this is just more to help you guys get up to speed. In the real world, what you would do is you would feed in your own proprietary data sources, right? So maybe it's you're really into Wall Street bets, right? Or maybe you're into, um, you know, Twitter, or maybe you're into I don't know. I mean, you name it. Like you you'd have your own proprietary data source. I just put this here to make it easy for people to understand. But this is where the action happens, right? So you want to find your data source for your security that really matters. Um, and you may, you may be using some of these te technical indicators as well. But basically, um, you want to get, you, you got to select what features you want to use, which is over half the battle, and then how do you get the data in, in there, right? And so with, with uh, deep learning, um, you don't have to do as much what they call feature engineering in terms of how to get the, the data into the, into the model. But with, um, and here we're doing what we call shallow learning. And I'll get more into that in the course. There's shallow learning and deep learning. They're both machine learning. Um, you know, for a long time, people only use shallow learning because deep learning was just computationally too expensive. Now with, with, um, with uh, uh, stock forecasting, you also have a bit of an issue, not so much on a computation level, but you have an issue with how much data is there. So time series forecasting tends to be a kind of a tough problem because it's, um, you you can't manufacture more data versus like, you know, if you're doing um, machine learning for cats and dogs, right? Cats and dogs, you could get, you know, classifying cats and dogs in the pictures. You, it's easy to get lots of pictures of cats and dogs, and so you could have lots of training data. But not with time series, you can't manufacture more time. So that's also why on the, on the output side, on the time series forecast side, you may use shallow learning, but it may use deep learning for like like NLP, for instance, on analyzing news feeds or or Reddit sub, sub, subreddits, right? Okay, so you put all that stuff in there, and then, um, um, and then, uh, yeah. So that's that's basically the first step. The second step here is, and, and guys, if I'm going too deep on this stuff, let me know. I, if I don't want to be losing you guys, uh, or if I'm, if you guys want me to go deeper, I could go deeper too. But I, I want to be cognizant of, of today's time as well. So um, the second part is the train is the test, right? So what's really important with with um, with uh, um, time series forecasting um, is making sure that you don't leak the future into the past because you could think, oh, I have a really great forecast. And what happens is you're leaking the future data into the past. And so that's really easy to do and it happens all the time, especially for beginners. 
So in this case here, what we're doing is um, we're forecasting from July 1st to July 15th, right? And the way we do that is we do it on a, a rolling basis. So traditional machine learning uses like random samples. You, your, your, sample, your, your test set and your training set are kind of like randomly selected, but you cannot do that with time series forecasting. With time series forecasting, you have to do kind of like a rolling forecast. You have to do like what we call expanding window. You start with a smaller data set and it expands out, right? You, uh, because one thing, one thing that's really important is knowing uh, one, of the, one of the key concepts out there is a forecast distance, okay? So that means the distance between the last piece of the latest data you have to when you're forecasting. And it's obvious, but it's easier to forecast the stock price in one minute than forecasting the stock price in one year, right? It gets, it gets much, much harder. So further you go out, higher the error rate. So what you want to be doing always is be minimizing the forecast distance from the last piece of data you have to when you're forecasting. So in this case, we're only doing 15 minutes, but it's doing a rolling forecast, right? Um, and I'm, I'm, hoping, I'm hoping this all makes sense to everyone, but if not, let me know. Um, so, um, so anyways, so here, uh, you know, same kind, of, um, same kind of feature set as we had before on the, on the, um, the, the training set. Um, so this is for the test set. So we do that. And then, um, yeah, this is, this is kind of what it looks like, right? So you could see, um, you could see all of, this is the data that we're gonna be presenting to the model. So you could see, you know, we're pre pre presenting some common features like time of day, um, you know, Unix time, which is just basically a way for the machines to understand what, what time is. Unix time, volume, Delta, RSI, kind of all the very, um, let me try to move this over. I don't know if I can move it over. I don't know, okay, well. And my, my bar, how come my, my bar is gone? Okay, I don't know what happened. Oh, here it is, okay. Yeah, so um, so like all these all these really, you know, old school traditional type of indicators. So you could see uh, like, you could see all of that. And then what we're trying to do is we're trying to um, predict the close, right? Every, basically every like 15 minutes, right? Okay, um, so, th so that's the setup. So this is, this is where you will spend most of your time. It's actually kind of figuring out the training set. Oh, I'm running it now. Okay, well, okay, it, it runs, but let me, uh, I meant to actually close this. Uh, let me close this part here. Okay, now the training. So the training, um, this takes a long time. I, I, could, I, could, I could kick it off, but it's gonna, in fact, I'm gonna kick it off now while I talk because it takes a long time to run. So, um, uh, yeah, so, so basically every, you're basically tra uh, training this for every 15 minutes and we're doing a rolling, kind of like what we call expanding window, right? So that means the training data is is being fed in like as 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 we're forecasting out. We're only forecasting 15 minutes in the future. We're also feeding the latest greatest training data, right? So the forecast distance is only 15 minutes, and um, and then you're basically uh, you're basically fitting the data. Um, so basically, it's it's learning from this and it's trying to figure out how to make the model so that it matches the ground truth as best as possible. Um, and then uh, down here, it's making the predictions. As to like what what um, what uh, what's going to happen, but this is going to take time to run. So I'm going to I'm going to do the cooking show style and kind of show you what the what what happens. Um, so this is going to sit there and it's going to crunch away for a while. But um, I've already ran it ahead of time, so you guys um, don't have to watch the thing run. Um, but basically, you generate the predictions, and then this is where it comes out, right? So basically, it's the same. And by the way, this picture here is, is what you call a data frame. This is a data frame. And so it looks like Excel. It's essentially Excel, but it's where you could do program, like you could do it programmatically. And then here, here you can see what here you can see here you can see the prediction of of the model, right? So like six point six point one three eight three five, right? And then you look over here, you know, not exact, but pretty close, right? So you you can, you can kind of see. But again, this is only predicting fifteen minutes in the future, so it's not like predicting a year in the future. If you're predicting a year in the future, you have much higher error rate. So, um, so that's what it looks like. Now, um, the actual, uh, oh, let's see. Uh, Yale asked, for the stock SRNE, can you quickly explain how to forecast, uh, catch the option price for weekly option, consider, uh, uh, consider for and return rate? So, um, yeah, so in this example here, what this is doing, I, I, I didn't put it in here, just keep this thing simple. This is not hooked up to a trading bot. But once the model is solid and you're like really sure about it, then you hook it up into a trading bot. This would be then the trading bot would use this to figure out like okay, I should buy now, buy a buy a put option or buy a call option or go naked 
so naked put or naked call or whatever you want to do. So in this example here, I'm not talking about that. Um, it's not hard. I'll, I'll show you. So let's go to analyze results. So um, what you want to see is, so it closes the ground truth, closes what really happened. So that's the blue line. And then the predicted is the um, yellow line. Um, so you could see, uh, by the way, this is like between different days. So it's, um, it's uh, that's why you see these kind of jumps. But when the market's actually open, you see that it's actually, for, for the most part, as you can see from the numbers up here, like 7.935, like the prediction is pretty damn close, right? It's like, you know, within pennies, right? But it's not that hard because we're only doing 15 minutes in the future, right? So you could you could directly make money just doing this, but not a lot of money, right? Because because you're the, 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 there's not you're not making like a massive like it's not not like it stocks doubling in in 15 minutes. It's like you're making pennies here. But the great thing is with algorithmically, it's doing it automatically. So you're, you're picking up these pennies, and, and oh, here's the other great thing about Paka is they charge no commission. So they do have the bid spread. So that's something you have to factor in. You have to factor in the bid spread. You do lose some on that, but they don't charge commission, which is nice. So you can do a lot of trading, but you do have to, you have, you do have to be mindful of the, of the, um, the bid ask. Uh, let's see, the other question here is what changes can I make to the program to predict the stock price for the next two days in advance? So yeah, so as you, as you go further out, um, further you go out, the harder prediction is and higher the error rate. So you can see with this one here, our error rate is pretty damn good. And I'll, I'll show you what that looks like down here. So like the percent error is like, you know, 0.72 is pretty, you know, this is times hundred percent. So it's like point, like less than 1% error rate. So it's pretty good, but we're only predicting 15 minutes in the future. If you start predicting a day out or a year out, it's much harder. So you have to use much better features than what we used to. We used um, these, these kind of features because they're really good for like short term, 15 minute type of predictions. But if you started going out like way in the future, then you need to use much more sophisticated features than this. This is not gonna cut it, right? Um, and then the other question here is, uh, would we get a chance to learn how to take this example and predict and classify EEG e or example Boolean based on if the stock is positive, non-regression? Um, yeah, you could, we could also do classification as well. Um, so that's, that's another thing we're getting into. We could do classifications for models as well. Um, but forecasting in general is, a, is it tends to be a regression problem. Um, and then the other question here is, is Apaca more effective than regular day trading strategy? Would it be more profitable? Well, I mean, I think the nice thing about Apaca is you could do it algorithmically, right? So like I said, like the really, you know, the strategies out there that we're gonna make a ton of money and like it's just a few trades, those days are, I mean, you could get lucky, don't get me wrong, but those days are like numbered, right? I mean, unless you're part of some sort of pump and dump scheme, right? But if you're just, you know, if you're like just doing, you know, trading, like you're trading on your own, I mean, it's like, um, it's like, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, you're not going to make massive profit. This is why algorithm trading is really important is because you, you pick up pennies. You're not, you're not, you're not going to pick up the $100 bills. Those $100 bills, the big institutions have already picked up, right? You're picking up pennies, right? So you got you to you do this automatically because you're, otherwise you'd be making like minimum wage, right? Trading, right? So um, uh, let's see. Uh, and then what other metrics do we use to test accuracy? So I, you actually use a lot. So this is scratching the surface. Um, so... I have like something called a mean squared error, which is also nice. It's also another way of measuring error, uh, but there's a lot, there's a lot of, so I'll get into a lot about error measurement in the course, but this is incredibly important. Like percentage error is actually a really crappy way of, of measuring your performance, but, but I do, I have it here because it's very simple for people to understand, but it's not a great way. There's a lot more better ways of measuring um, error rates, but, but this is just one of many. There's, there's actually, hundreds of error measurements. And, and there's right error, error measurements for the problem that you're trying to solve. Um, and then, um, yeah, could the, I know this course is for finance, but could these skills be leveraged for industries? Well, machine, le machine learning, I think is the future. I, I believe, you know, machine learning right now, like, as I said, 99.9% .9 of, of computers today are programmed explicitly, right? Not implicitly like, like you are with machine learning, not through training data. I actually think in five, 10 years, you're going to see a humongous increase in the number of things that are done through, I mean, directly everything that's done through programming can done, be done through machine learning. It's just whether it's easier to do it one way or the other. And for like pattern recognition, this kind of stuff, machine learning rocks. In fact, it's very hard to do it programmatically. Um, but I think um, more and more things will be done via machine learning. Um, you can imagine maybe one day, in fact, 
this is something that Piazzolla has done in GPT-3 where they describe what is the web interface they want to have. And you type it, you describe it in English and it, it builds the, it, it actually programs up the, the, so all the front end web, all the front end uh, engineers have to be careful because GPT-3, you can literally generate these front ends um, programmatically. I mean, just, just by type with just plain English. It's actually kind of cool. You guys could, could Google that. So I think, I think more and more would be done by machine learning. I, you know, if you ask my, what is my thought? I think probably in the future, um, you know, double digit percentage would be done by machine learning versus traditional programming. Um, I mean, there's always gonna be some, some things that are easier to be done like through um, programming, like you're doing a sorting algorithm, probably easier to do it through uh, programming. But, um, but I think increasingly more and more is gonna be done um, for uh, 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 using, using ML. So um, Anthony asked, can this be used for swing trading? Um, so, so this can be used for swing training, it can be used for pair training, it can be used for like martingale. There's all these kinds of different strategies out there. At the core of them is a forecast. So the, the forecast is, is, is a, all, all the others are what I call triggers. So there's a whole bunch of different triggers. In fact, on our platform, on Pika, Pika group, we have, you know, we have the, we have the, the, the indicates the forecast, and then we have the triggers. You can kind of separate the two. So any forecast can be used with triggers. The trigger can then say, based on the forecast of the model, we think this is going to happen. We should, we should do this, right? Now, there are some really advanced triggers. We're not going to get into this course, but the, the really cutting edge area right now is using um, uh, like reinforcement learning, right? Um, so RL. So that's like the cutting edge. And, and the reason why is because RL has been proven. So you guys probably all heard of like AlphaGo. Uh, AlphaGo is uh, the program that Google uh, had that beat the world's best Go player. That was like the last human game that, um, that machines hadn't beaten humans. Um, and it used RL and, and RL kicks ass in games. And the reason why is because, like I said, the fuel for machine learning is the training data. And the great thing about games, like especially a game like, like, like Go, is it's symmetric. Like you, the, the, you can have one, RL agent on one side and another RL agent on another side. They, they, can, they, they, they could play. They could play each other. So they have unlimited amount of training data. It's actually really cool. So, so there's not too many things out there in real life that are that like that. But games are one of them. So games are, are something which are great for RL because it generate it generates its own data, right? Like with stock trading is a little bit of like forecast is hard. You can't. It's hard to have RL for that. But RL is great. Machine enforcement learning is really great for, um, really great for. Um, and if you think about the stock market, it's actually it's actually it's actually the world's biggest game. If you think about it, it's it's, it's pretty much everyone everyone is trying to get money from each other essentially, right? So it's like the world's biggest game. Now it's a very big game, right? But it is a game. So directly, RL should be really good. Um, let's see. Um, since ML is so powerful, uh, will financial lose their jobs to ML? Well, I mean, you know, so, so for the people on the Zoom. We're talking to a very elite group of people because most people, you know, and for most people, the bright thing to do is to um, not actively trade, but just to buy index funds or mutual funds and just, you know, buy and hold and not do much else. Um, when you start doing ML, you're, 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 you're you know, um, you're, uh, you're, you're, you're getting an edge that other people don't have. Um, and there's no guarantee, of course, you'll make money, but you have a better chance because you're, 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 you're basically, where, where ML really kicks ass is, um, is when there's large amounts of data, right? So like you look at Reddit, tons of, you can't, no one in the right mind can read all the Reddits, like in do stock trading. I mean, you couldn't do it. You couldn't read it fast enough. It's just literally impossible. Or um, to factor in maybe, you know, like that, when there's vast amounts of data, our, and machine learning just kicks ass. It just beats any human. When the small, small small amounts of data, like, oh, I know that, you know, um, this company is going to have bad earnings, like insider trading. Okay, that's better better done by humans, right? If you have if you have if you have insider trading information, you go you agree, that's not you don't need ML for that. That's that's you know you 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 have you have you have some sort of secret information that nobody else has. You you go do that, right? But um, but I think financial advisors are actually good for other reasons, maybe for wealth planning. We are stage in life. Maybe you don't want to be buying too much, you know volatile stocks when you're about to retire. I don't know. So I think there's, I think financial, financial advisors also have their place, but, um, and then uh, let's see, uh, Ronaldo asked, I think it would be in the training section, but 
with these, oh, I think it's moving around, with these machine learning, machine learning programs become self, actually, this is self-learning. This is, machine learning is self-learning, right? It's, it's like, uh, well, maybe not self-learning in that it's researching its own stuff, but you're feeding the data and it's learning versus you're explicitly programming. Um, so um, will they become smarter over, over time with better trades? Um, if you feed in the training data, you, it could be like with you get more, more as you get more data. The, the, again, the fuel for these models is the training data. Now, the drill big trick with all here is with time series, you have a limited amount of data. That's the that's a big hard part about time series forecasting is that you can't generate more time. So they're inherently time series forecasting is probably one of the harder machine learning problems to solve. I mean, these days like training a model to classify cats and dogs fairly trivial, right? And it's easy to get a lot of data for that. Just label the data. Time series forecasting, pretty, pretty tough. Um, now, um, you know, I would suggest for the people on this call, probably just periodically training the models is the right thing to do. But if you want to get super fancy, you could actually do it dynamically. You could, you could do it constant training, right? You could, you could do that as well. It might cost you a small fortune though, because Google, Google's uh, compute service is not free. So that's something else to think about is that um, how much training you want to do. And then another one is, do you think your course on ML you can pursue a career of forecasting sales and manufacturing financial products inventory mentioned? Yes, you can. Um, in fact, that's how we actually started. We started forecasting retail sales. We started forecasting retail sales and then um, we had a lot of demand for people who wanted us to forecast uh, securities. So very, very translatable. I mean, if you think about it, a lot of what's out there is forecasting, right? Whether you're a manager in a retail store trying to forecast how many workers you are or you're, um, you're, you have a, you know, an Amazon store and you're trying to forecast how much inventory to buy, right? Or you're trying to forecast how, how well is your ad going to perform? Or, I mean, a lot of what's out there is a forecast. Um, so, um, yeah. Oh, oh, one thing I didn't get a touch on here is, um, is uh, uh, this is one thing is um, feature importance, right? So random force is one of the nice things. And that's one of the reasons why I picked it for this example here is you can see which ones, which features were important in, in knowing what the stock price is going to be in 15 minutes. So not surprising why a lot of people use RSI. Um, you know, pretty pretty important feature, right? Um, the other one here is you know the time, right? That's also kind of important. Um, and the other one's less so, right? So I just this this was not a no, this is not a uh, probably a surprise for that's done trading, right? The RSI is you know if you're doing a short term forecasting, not a not a bad indicator. Um, Okay, so let's see. Uh, Steve asked, mostly models seem to, to seems to be on a high frequency time, time series of price and technical training. How to company fundamental factor into model? Just type of data, even though less frequent. Yeah, so um, you can feed in company fundamentals. In fact, the nice thing about Apoca is actually has the fundamentals. So I think through the Polygon API, you can actually get fun, fundamental like PE ratios and things like that. So you, so you can definitely factor those into the model. Now, in general, um, uh, you know, the reason why a lot of people like to use ML models for short, like short-term forecast, is because um, because there's lots of lots of data. Like it's humanly impossible to, like I said, to read like read off Reddit every minute. It's just humanly impossible. I mean, maybe you could do it, but I think very few people can. Um, and so, ML models have advantage because they they're pretty fast. You, you could they could literally read all the Reddits if you wanted to. You could read, you could have read all the Reddits and then come up with some sort of forecast based off of all the Reddits. Um, but you can't really humanly do it. So that's why a lot of ML stuff is for, for focused a little bit more on the shorter term than longer term. Because longer term, maybe, you know, you know that there's going to be a civil war and, you know, whatever, or, you know, you know, it, it's, it's, um, um, there's not as much advantage because, because the, as you go further out, the amount of information you have on the future, like let's say a year out. So like I said, humans are really good when there's, little amount, not, not much, like little amounts of data. Machine learning is really kick-ass amazing with a large amount of data. In a short time frame, there's large amounts of data. So much data that most humans can't, in fact, I would say it's possible for a human to actually process all of it. So that's why ML tends to rule, would be really great for a short-term kind of, kind of forecast, better than humans versus long-term. Because long-term, there's not as much data available, right? Not unless you're like some of these hedge funds that, that buy satellite photos of Farms and you know stuff like that. Unless you're unless you unless you're like buying these these proprietary data sources, you know you don't necessarily have. So that's why ML tends to be more focused on the shorter term. Um, 
And then um, Sheriff will ask, does ML work for Forex market? Absolutely, yes. <laughs> so that is, that is um, uh, um, like MT4, um, MT5, yeah, yeah, I mean, it's Forex, Forex, um, ML, um, definitely, definitely um, heavily used, heavily used there as well. Um, and then um, Rob asked, can we assign weights to certain features? Yeah, we can. Um, in fact, that's what you're kind of doing with machine learning is your, I mean, with the feature engineering part is your, um, your when you're doing feature engineering, you're trying to figure out like, um, where does the weight you put on one versus the other? How do you normalize it? How do you do, um, you might do something like PCA, which is like feature reduction, because maybe your model, you don't have enough data for your model. Um, and then, um, and then for deep learning, if you have just a ton of, ton of data, you use deep learning and then deep learning will automatically figure all of the stuff out. But a lot of times with time series forecasting, you don't have that luxury. So for time series forecasting, it's hard to use deep learning. Um, Jody asked, how well do ML models, wait, how well do, how well do the ML models do when the event like DB, uh, W2I went um, negative last year? Um, so, um, you know, it's, it's, um, it's a good question. Um, so I would say, I'm not actually familiar with that event, so I can't, I can't particularly about that one, but I, I think maybe the, the person asking about like black swan events. Um, so so, Greg, so I, just want, I just want to fill you in while you're talking about, so W2I, he's talking about uh, when oil prices went negative. Oh, uh, sure. yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, so, um, so here's the, the, the downside with machine learning, right? Is um, you're training on data it's seen. So for these extraordinary black swan events, um, machine learning, and I would definitely advise when people start using augment training, do not like fire and forget and just walk off. And <laughs> you, you gotta kind of watch this stuff. And that's, that's also why we like in our, in our, as part of our service, we have fail safes because you, there are these black swan events, right? That happen. Um, so um, the models are able to extract, extrapolate to, uh, to some extent, but, but you know, um, these models, if you think about like, even like, even like, um, GPT-3, which is probably arguably the most advanced machine learning model in the world right now. Um, if you think about the average human and the life experience you had and all the training data you've gone over your life, a human is probably going to be better able to handle the extraordinary circumstances. So um, definitely, definitely for like uh, black swan events, you would not be using machine learning because black swan, okay, the nature of black swan events is that they are very rare. So you don't have a lot of training data. So that's the thing you have to imagine is like, you need training data to fuel the model. And so there's not gonna be enough, there's not gonna be enough, um, enough uh, training data for the model to be smart about it. Um, then Nikki asked, you mentioned 15 minutes is a lot for the, is a lot, wait, you mentioned 15 minutes a lot is the algo set to work from the 15 minute time frame because I'm, not, because I'm a Forex trader, but I analyzed using the top down method from monthly to weekly daily. I take entries from, uh, for the four hour. Okay, I'm not sure I understand the question, Nikki. You may maybe want to ask it another way, or maybe expand upon the question. Um, so maybe maybe Nikki, if you're still on, you could um, you could type in the question a little bit more. I'm not quite sure. I, Robert, Robert, do you know what the person's asking? Um, let me let me read it over again right now. Um... Also, I saw someone raise their hand. So whoever raised their hand, just type the question in and we'll answer it. Um, okay, so let me jump back to the, uh, let me see, this is it finished running? Yep, it finished running. And then you can see, um, you can see the results here. Uh, well, you can see it, um, the output. Yeah, so not faking it, it's, it's actually running. Um, hey, hey, Greg, uh, so I just, I just reread uh, the question here. Yeah. Um, and uh, if I understand this correctly, and, and Nikki, again, you could type out the question if I'm not understanding it correctly. But uh, what it sounds like is um, you're doing this algorithm for 15 minutes. I think uh -huh. they're asking about different time frames. I think specific four hour time frame. Is oh, you can do four hour time frame. Yeah, absolutely. You can do whatever time frame you want. The only reason why I do 15 minutes, and the reason why people, a lot of people do algorithmic trading and machine learning for a short time frame is just because um, it's just because, like, Further time frame you go out, more the humans have the advantage, right? So like Warren Buffett, he buys companies for like the ten years. He has a ten year plan for that company, right? He's going to structure it. He's going to do so. He has like a ten year plan, and so 
So, so machine learning is not good for the 10 year plan. Warren Buffett and human is good for the 10 year plan. But, 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 but the advantage starts swinging towards machine learning as you get shorter and shorter time frame. Now there's a limit. When you get to like high frequency trading, when you're doing like 10,000 trades per second, okay, that's a totally different, Apaka is not for that. We're not for that. That's a, that's there. There is like, you want to be like, you know, you want to park your, your server right next to the exchange, right? In New Jersey or whatever. So like that, that's a totally, so when you, as you get to ultra, ultra short time frames, that's a different game. That's all about front running the market, right? That's all about, you know, trading slightly before like everyone else has the information, right? So that's, that's not machine learning. That's just physics. That's just being really close to the exchange and, and being the speed of light type of thing, right? So as you get, so, but, but yeah, so, so the way to think about it is high frequency trading is all about like capital. Do you have the capital to, to park your computer right next to, do you have the shortest, the, the, the least amount of latency? As you get into the minutes to like hours time frame, machine learning has a pretty good advantage. As you get into the years, humans, humans rule. Humans, humans are better for like forecasting for a year, right? I mean, machine learning is not gonna, not, gonna, not gonna do better than that, right? So yeah. Uh, well, I mean, I, 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 well, I put it this way: you could use you could use machine learning to do like image analysis, like so, like a lot, like what a lot of the big um, institutionals do is they will um, they will like uh, uh, take satellite photos or buy satellite photos, right? From you know, uh, like what was it called? Planet. There's a whole bunch of companies that sell satellite photos now of, of whatever, and they'll look at like the fields or look at the parking lots of retailers or look at you know. They use computer vision for that, so definitely that's good for that. And those are longer term type trades, but um, but yeah, okay, good. Um, so let's jump back to the presentation here. Um, uh, Chip gave a demo. Ah, I think I'm on to my last slide. Yeah, so I think that's, um, I think that's it. Um, are there any other questions or anything that we should, anything else that we should discuss? Should, should we go over the um, Maybe we're, Robert, maybe uh, I'm a little bit over time here. I'm not sure we should, should I go over into the uh, course curriculum a little bit or what do, you, what do you think is appropriate at this point? Sure, yeah, we can go over the course curriculum. Um, one more thing I wanna to address too, because someone asked this in our chat, um, asked about how to sign up for the course, right? Uh, we got more questions now, so I'll let you take care of that. Um, but if you could go to lumiwealth.com and you could show them how to sign up for the course, um, I could walk you through it, Greg, it's pretty simple. Um, and this is great because when I get you to walk through it, then everyone else will know how to do it too. Okay. So oh, actually, th th sorry, there's one other question for Rob here, yeah. uh, Rod here. He asks, how do you transfer this to broker software? So, um, Apaka is, is really meant for algorithmic trading and what I would recommend, but, um, like for instance, um, I mean, uh, uh, IB or, um, Ameritrade, they also have, um, uh, they also have, uh, APIs, although I, I, th I think Apaka is vastly easier to program um, and no commission, which is nice. Um, and, um, and then, you know, like for our, our company, Pika, we, we support for Apaka. We also support IB. So, um, and then Renato asks, in terms of finance investments, what are great entry-level careers for machine learning? I mean, machine learning is like the demand skill set right now in computers. So it's like, I mean, there are so many, there are so many, there's so much demand for machine learning. It's pretty crazy right now. So if you, if you get good at machine learning, um, like the words are oyster right now. Um, sorry, Robert, going back to this, do you want me to um, go over the course curriculum or show, show people how to sign up? Yeah, um, so, so let's go. Um, do you want to start off with lumiwealth.com so people know, um, just go to lumiwealth.com, okay. right? Um, right? So L-U-M-I-W-E-A-L-T-H, like Lumi Wealth. You, you guys see it on the screen. Uh, you click the button, get started today. Um, or you can scroll down the screen. Either way, it's going to take you down to our courses and services. And then in the middle is the machine learning one. This is a brand new one, right? Right in the middle. Click on that. Okay. Perfect. And then this is it, right? So you can scroll down and down the screen right here. If you want to purchase, just click on see available dates right in the middle. That's a live class, right? And it's going to take you down. Select course. There you go. Enter in your credit card information there. And that's it. Okay, great. All right. Uh, I can talk a little bit up. about uh, Robert. I, we're like twenty minutes overtime, but it's okay. To talk a little bit about the course agenda. Yeah, or, sure. Or, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Um, so, um, oops, I just. I gotta go back. Okay. 
Um, yeah, so the way I, I try to structure this course is I try to make it very practical. Um, there's a lot of machine learning courses out there, but they're kind of, um, they're kind of lyrical for my taste. And I think it's, not, it's unnecessary these days because there's so many libraries out there, right? Um, like some courses would have you like write your own neural network from scratch. And, and that's pointless in my, it's like, like, are you really gonna add two numbers manually? No, you're, you're just gonna use a calculator, right? So same thing here, I, I try to keep this thing practical because I, I feel like uh, machine learning is advancing so much. There's so many good libraries and APIs out there. It doesn't make sense. Like a lot of these courses, they, they try to like, they focus a lot on the, like the theory and a lot on the, um, a lot on the, like, like building something from scratch. And I, I, I think um, I'm, I'm more interested in getting people running quickly than maybe some of that background. So I, I, I so this is not, this is a, a relatively um, very focused on trying to be practical type of course. So, um, so yeah, so first, first week is really focused on trying to kind of make sure everyone has the basics so, so they can actually, you know, know how to use Colab and all that kind of stuff. Um, and then um, you do have to know a little bit about machine learning. So I talk a little bit about that. These are some of the very, you know, simple models, what we would call shallow learning type of, type of models, like random forces is an example of a shallow learning. And, and, you know, shallow learning tends to be what you have to use for, for time series because of limited data, um, uh, limited time data. You could use deep learning for, you know, like NLP type stuff for, um, uh, oh, actually someone is asking, what's the difference between the algorithmic trading and machine learning course? So um, the, the main difference, as I said, is like one, machine learning is like the brains. It's trying to figure out when do you actually want to do a trade or what's a fork, what's, like if you knew with great uncertainty in, in 10 minutes, that the stock price is going to be certain, it's going to be a certain price. You would place a trade right away, right? Because you're guaranteed money. Now you may not make a lot of money on that, but you could do a lot of those trades, right? Um, so, so it's so this is more about the brains for your algorithmic training. The, brain, the algorithmic training that Robert had before is more about the robot, the, the the mechanics of how to place the trades, how to get the data, stuff like that. This is about how to give the the brains to actually keep, make money. And then Steve, Steve asked a question. You should probably answer that one, Robert. Um, yeah, so is there a discount for people already taking the algo train course? Yes. So if you guys want to buy both courses together, there's definitely a discount. Um, you guys can set up a call uh, to basically talk about that. But yes, if you, all, if you want to buy both courses together, and that's, I think, a great question. I mean, Greg, which what you just answered. Algorithmic trading, algorithmic trading is basically... Uh, allowing you to actually do the trade. So it's like building that robot, whereas the machine learning is the brains behind it to make that robot really smart and make a lot of money. Yeah. Um, so both together make a lot of sense. So if you want to take both together, we could definitely give you a discount. Um, either email myself, uh, rob at loomywealth.com. You can go to our book a call link on the website, book a call with, with Alicia or one of our other salespeople. Uh, we could set you up with a discount. Um, if you've bought one of them, like don't even, we don't even have to set up actually time to, to, to talk to you. We, you buy one of them and then you want to, to get a discount on the other one, reach out to us and we'll do that for you as well. Right. Uh, we don't have any automated way of doing it yet. Um, you know, this is, this is, a, this is our new foray into a brand new course. So we don't, we don't have automations there yet, but we will eventually do that. So yes, that's, that's the answer to that. Okay. So, um, oh, yeah, do you want to, well, okay. Which course should be done first? I, I think. Um, I think either course could be done. Although maybe if you had a preference, maybe, maybe the algo training one might be better to do first. But um, I, I think the nice thing about, I mean, so the, here's the thing about machine learning. In fact, it's something I wanted to show you is that uh, one, of the things, one of the things we're going to talk about is auto ML tables, which is actually something Google made for non-programmers. So you could, you could use it without writing a single line of Python code, which is nice. Um, so, I mean, this is kind of like the, um, the, the, um, why it's kind of a greenfoot opportunity is that, um, the skill set for machine learning is very much very different than programming. Uh, machine learning is like, how good of a teacher are you? Right. That's why, that's how I have to think about it. now. And now these algorithms compared to even like a one-year-old are pretty dumb, right? So a one-year-old, you could probably show three examples and a one-year-old might probably get it. Right. With machine learning, these models are pretty dumb. So you got to give it like a thousand examples or something like that in order for them for it to kind of pick it up. So, um, so um, yeah, so uh, um, yeah, I, I mean, I'm tempted to say you could, you could do it. It might be a little bit tough, but you can possibly do it. Um, 
And then can someone who has no computer experience be able to do this course or should you do an algorithm creating course? Again, I think um, we're gonna get into some things about like we could do some things without any programming and you could actually, the nice thing about Python too is that so much stuff, like just about anything you wanna do, you could Google it or pop up in stock overflow and you can paste the code, right? Now you kind of have to make it work. So you have to know a little bit, little bit of programming, but it's a great way to learn. So I think I would finish, I'd love to get Robert's opinion, but I think, I think probably either order could probably work. Um, but Robert, I don't know, what, what is your, your opinion? Yeah, I mean, I agree. So I, I think you do in, in either order. Um, you know, I, I think, you know, at least the algorithm training course, they go through, kind of, we go through like the beginnings of Python. So we give them a little bit of hand holding yeah. there. Um, so if they're completely green to, to coding, then, then we do give some hand holding there. Um, but I think you could do either one first, you know, um, and to be honest with you, and, and I'm looking at the other questions here. Um, can you take both at the same time? All that sort of thing. I mean, if you look at the actual dates for these, um, literally the algorithmic trading course happens first <laughs> in terms of dates. So you could take both together. Like for example, we just started our most recent one right now. So people are taking ours right now. Uh, I think yesterday is the first class I start teaching. Um, they perfectly will segment and segue into your uh, ML course. Like that, that works out perfectly, right? Um, we have another algo trading course starting on March 11th, I believe, right? And on March 11th, um, they can get started. They'll start learning how to code and they can do both, right? They can do both courses together as long as they have the time commitment, of course, right? Um, you can do both courses together. So hopefully it answers kind of all those questions. <laughs> there's, there's a whole bunch of questions around this and uh, this is a general topic. Um, I don't think you have to take one before the other. I think you could take ML and then take algo. So you, you learn about how to do the ML processing and you figure out how to actually predict things. And then you take the algo trading course to learn how to actually execute it, right? You could do that, or you could do the reverse. Um, if you do a reverse, if you're completely new to coding, maybe it's a little bit easier to take algo trading first and then ML, but I think either one are fine. Um, again, also you have to pay attention to um, the actual timing of each of them. And the algo trading course literally comes sooner in terms of like the, the course start dates, right? So there you go. Well, one thing I would say, Robert, is um, is um, I, like Collab or, or Jupyter Notebooks are a great way, one of the one of the best ways to actually learn Python. And Python is probably the world's easiest programming language to learn. I think maybe not. I don't. Know, I think it's very easy to learn. But um, so um, so anyway, that's a, that's something else to keep in mind. Um, okay, so that's part one. Part two is kind um, so, of sorry, Greg. I want to answer one more thing um, oh, sure. just because I'm I'm, I'm rereading the question. Alicia's giving me a nice cue here. Um, how much time will it take to do both at the same time? Um, I think, um, you know, we, we recommend about two hours or sorry, 10 hours a week for the algo trading course. I think you're recommending about the same amount of time for yours. Um, theoretically that's, that's 20 hours per week, right? However, I will say that if you're taking one course and the other, there is some overlap. So you're, you're probably not gonna be 20 hours per week, probably gonna be closer to 15 hours per week. I think personally, right. Just to yeah. address that question spe more specifically, right. Yeah. So then, on um, on the um, second part, the project is kind of building what what uh, what I just showed. Um, so um, this is important because, like, you, you understand how like how time series works, like time, time series models work. So that's kind of important. Um, that's core forecasting. And then you also have to kind of figure out like how do you fit, how do you pick the right features, right, and measure it and set it up and all that stuff. Um, and then the capstone is what I hope is that everyone is able to leave this course and able to come up with a forecast and everyone will be doing their own, right? So it's, it's something which you could actually use this to actually um, implement for your model, right? You could actually have a, um, oh, actually that's one thing I, I forgot to show you guys on this, on this part here. The last part here is dumping out the, the model, right? So that you could, you could use this model to, um, you can use this model to uh, uh, inside of inside of your um, trading bot, right? But the, the hope is by the, by the end of uh, part three, you'll have a working forecaster, and and everyone will pick their favorite stock, and you know you you pick your favorite data data feeds, right? But you'll be able to actually have uh, some sort of forecasting edge that um, that you couldn't get you couldn't get um, otherwise, right? So it's something we're something where hopefully. There's a model that that uh, 
uh, will give you a more accurate forecast. Because you can imagine the, the person with the most accurate forecast makes the most money. That's there's no no question about that, right? So, so, so that's the capstone project is, is to actually build a something. That, this one here is just training exercise so you actually know how to you know use time series models. But this one here is is about actually coming leaving the course with something tangible that you can actually use, and that's the idea. So and that really you have to use natural language processing because that's a lot of the a lot of the data sources are are news feeds, Reddit, you know, stuff like that, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, maybe. I don't know. Probably not TikTok. But uh anyways, yeah. So um yeah, so that's that's kind of how it's structured. Okay. I think that's it. Um is there any other questions or anything else that we could uh, we should discuss? Greg, I just wanted to say, um, it, we'll see if there's any more questions, just because I, I know sometimes it takes people time to type out questions. So I'll give them, I'm going to give people time. Um, so guys, if you have more questions, please type them in. Um, but before we, we get to that, and we'll, we'll wait a little bit for this, um, Greg, I just want to say amazing presentation. Um, I know uh, I'm speaking for a lot of people here to say like, oh, wow, this is like, honestly, some really, really cool stuff. Um, I could see why your clients are making so much money that, that, that kegger of 42%, I think you're very modest about that. That is an extremely high return, 42% <laughs> a year, just, just doing the math there. It's like, wow, these people are, are, are making some incredible returns. I know you told me earlier, and again, with a disclaimer that, you know, not everyone could do this, like in, a, in a, you know, hundreds or thousands of percentage points, which is incredible. Right. Uh, and it makes sense based on everything that you're saying. I feel like I'm learning from this. You know, I want to take your course myself personally. So actually I will take your course. So I'm not, I'm not just saying I'm, I might, I'm, I actually will be part of your course when we actually do this in March 23rd, I believe. And if we go down. Awesome. I just want to say thank you, Greg. Yeah. Well, th thank you, Robert. And thank you everyone for attending this webinar. Really appreciate it. Thank you for, thank you everyone for asking all the questions. Really appreciate that as well. All right. All right. Well, it uh, seems like that's uh, the end of the questions. Um, once again, thank you very much, Greg. This has been awesome. You've been great at answering all these questions. This has been a lot today. Um, thank you all. This is amazing. This is great. Lots of very good, very good feedback here, um, which I, I concur with. You know, I definitely agree with. So thank you again, Greg. Hope you guys have a good night.